also play at a few other venues in the French Quarter. And uh, I still travel around the world, uh, bringing this great music we have. It's <coughs> called here in New Orleans. I'm specifically a jazz musician, but I do play other genres of music. But my heart is grounded in jazz and for various reasons, not just because I'm from New Orleans and because of Louis Armstrong and Al Hurd and Pete Fountain and people like that, simply because I find the music uh, much more challenging than uh, other forms. So I've been wired for sound before, but not like this. <laughs> Usually it's either a microphone in front of me or so forth, but uh, this feels a little strange, but... Uh, uh, no, I'm willing, I think it's going to work. <laughs> so anyways, come over here. Okay, I'm glad to do I see Jerry. And I promise I won't blast you out, but uh, I need to warm up a little bit because I, I haven't touched on one since earlier this morning. So uh, if it doesn't sound too great at first, forgive me. Okay. So am I going to be like a robo pump? If you want to, you do your robo Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> well, I wanted to. I, I, 
the whole objective of, of this is the principle for blowing a wind instrument, any wind instrument, and the same thing applies if you're singing. So you take in air, you take a yoga breath, which is what I do. I get a lot of the air and I expand the lower parts of the capillaries in my lungs. I don't, I don't want to take a thoracic breath where I just get air here. So when I breathe, my tummy comes out some. And when I, when, I get ready to, when I get ready to blow, I squat on my diaphragm muscle. So I push up the air with the diaphragm. You know, I'm holding the horn up, it has some weight, so um, it's, you know, it's not that heavy. It's not like when do more services check. How about the more, the more technical passive you have to play? It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm still applying. So I'm, I'm, I'm manipulating the horn with the air in the back of my, I'm stroking the back of my teeth for articulation with my tongue. Right? What do you think about your chart? And, and as far as the lower uh, 
brass lines, then there's a lot less energy being used to, to play actually go to the instrument, which is what I want to see. <laughs> so in the sports world, you hear about prime movers. That's why you see gorillas hitting golf balls. The masters hitting 320. That's because they look like gorillas. Okay? And they do the training, the core training, to develop the prime movers. Now you're seeing the same application without using the similar lingo of developing the core, the power source of the diaphragm, the airflow with minimization of Pressure. Stress and pressure. Okay, so, seeing clinically when you see a brass player or a singer, you don't see those belly buttons moving. Okay, so, always examine the belly button of a player. Well, that's if they're wearing something, you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the singers are seeing it. You've got to cover it up. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. But you're saying that in comparison to somebody else. So, in other words, for him to get the same amount of sound, and a quality of sound, because somebody else would have to be all over the place with what they had on their masseters to make to generate the same quality of sound. Yeah. So he's just he's more efficient. An insufficient power he's more efficient to get that. Yeah. And so therefore, they would reduce the noise. But again, based on yesterday's, it's not necessarily that. It could be other issues. But again, do the mind body in terms of the vagus control, where do you think it's going to go when you get stressed in it? So Leroy, do you ever, I, I put, look at your shoulders and I say, you know, I'm an advocate for swimming. And so I would say swimming, I swim, I stretching swim. out the shoulders, I'm trying to loosen this stuff up would be really a neat thing. Yeah, I, I swim. I mean, you I was swimming <laughs> four times a week to the training center close the pool now. Okay. <laughs> you know, uh, and for, I won't get into those uh, no, but that was helpful for why did you swim? Because uh, lose Well, shoulders. because I love to exercise. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, I played sports. I mean, even though I was in band and played music, I also I played little league baseball. I played football, you know, and uh, I, you know, I wrestled in high school, took a little bit of karate when I was a freshman in so high school. I mean, I've done, a, yeah. I've done a lot of stuff. Tore my right Achilles when I was 34, back in 1992, playing flag football. So how, how low is this? Okay. So you can see your right shoulder is putting out 4,000 picowatts per square centimeter of power. Okay. It's the power across the center. And the left shoulder is actually just uh, about 2,000. Okay. If I, relatively speaking, look at what's coming out of your, your embouchure, your chops. Nothing. So it's important to look at muscle signals through frequency because we know it's slower, faster, and farther. A. John Baz Major and Norm McMaster Research. So looking at amplitude is relatively meaningless. You want to look at pitch fiber recruitment over time. That's where optimal technique major intervention is. So Leroy being a great player, but in order to preserve his artistry and creativity and his years of training, he has to maintain uh, those particular Water functions to prevent injury. So you can have a great learning uh, demonstration. Oh, any trumpet players? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. It's, it, it's something I. I, I yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, peace. What do you mean? You know, I think that, you know, I have uh, private stu students sometimes, uh, even even young, young people who are at college level, you know, working in the music uh, department, uh, and the, the principal instrument is the trumpet. And even at that point, at 18, 19 years old, they haven't quite yet understood how to use the diaphragm. Because it's just something, the best way to understand how that works in getting a good breath in is when you yawn, and you open your mouth and yawn, not one of these yawns where you're trying to hide and going like this, but a really nice yawn is, is, is the best way to understand how you take in a breath when you try to manipulate a wind instrument or, or vocals or singing as well. Uh, and, and once you can do that uh, and think about it when you do it, because it's just something that's not automatic. You know, 
was with, with the breathing thing. And a long time ago, you know, a, a great player told me once that, that the key to this thing is, is breathing. Even Danny Parker, he was a guitar player, but he told me, he said, you see how Charlie Parker's, listen how Charlie Parker's playing like that? He said, it's the, it's the, it's the, he uses, he knows how to breathe. Now, I didn't fully understand that then. I was like 14, but a few years later, I, I started, I, I grasped what, what, he, what he was saying, and, and then I changed my way of playing and relied more on, on the technique buzzing rather than blowing. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, so we could go into heart rate variability and breathing and stuff in our field. That's, as you know, in sports medicine, huge right now, especially in Augusta. Yeah. A couple questions. First, yeah. there was some asymmetry of the masseter. Is that ever important? And, and then well, before I lose my spot, can you tell us what injuries well, you get? Well, I don't get any. And that's, it's, that's because when I'm actually, there's so much air that's inside. First of all, let me go back a little bit. I changed my arm sure when I was, I started changing it when I was 20, 21. Because I, I played first, uh, I played center, but I, I ended up playing off center because before I ever picked up a wind instrument, I chipped one of my teeth. And my mom took me to the dentist to have that teeth cap when I was 13. And uh, as you all probably know, dentistry was almost prehistoric in 1970, 71, compared to what it is now. And I had the dentist, for some reason, the Novocaine that he shot up of in this portion of my gums, it froze me. I felt frozen all the way up to here. And it was a long time before the sensation was gone. And I had to play, you know, I was in school band. So I was in pain, and my parents aren't musicians, so they didn't really know what was wrong. But I was gradually shifting my piece over. So then, for some reason, my neck was coming out on one side to the point where after about my 10th year of blowing the horn every day, and I practiced four or five hours a day, often, and my neck was, I, if I buttoned my collar, the neck would pop over. So then, I, as I got, when I got out of high school, my first year at Loyola, I got, there was some books that I got uh, on what is called the encyclopedia of the pivot system, because it's like this lip you pivot on, and this lip, the bottom lip is a flipping lip, because it flips over the top of the bottom teeth. So it's all about, and so that's flexibility. So this one vibrates, this one vibrates, and this one moves up and down for register. Read players have what they call a register key, so that's why it's easy for them to hit high notes. But we have to do it with air and, and it's in lips. So uh, I changed and gradually moved over, so I lost a lot of my range. And I had very sufficient range even when I was 17 years old and had been playing seven years then. But I lost all that, and I had to start sort of almost from scratch. And it took me about 12 years to redevelop an atmosphere because I, that was I was injured. So right now, because I moved over, I still have, and I employ, I employ circular breathing often, and that's when I have to puff like that, and I can sustain a note indefinitely. It's not like a, a balloon about to burst or anything. And the important thing is, like this pivot system book said, it's not how you look, it's how you feel. So it's how it feels that determines 
how it comes out. Not if I look, you know, I mean, some people have oval bites or none bites. You see, like this, you see brass players, I pretty much have an even bite, so my horn stays here. And I pivot, and when I I go with the jaw to make the low note come to hit it precisely. And so as I play up higher, the horn straightens up. It's just, just a little bit of position. So. Okay. Dr. Miller is ready to do some dance.